So in this video, I'd like to talk to you about what I consider one of the most valuable skills any bushcrafter can own, but especially if you're a budget bushcrafter, and that is learning how to use the sewing machine. I know that doesn't sound very bushcrafty, but it's invaluable, really it is. And I've got a few projects I'm going to show you in a second. But if you learn how to use a sewing machine, you can not only repair your gear, modify your gear, but you can make your own gear. Now, my, my honestly, my sewing skills are quite limited, and this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use a sewing machine. There are plenty of people who can show you that much better than I can. And the reason I learned to use the sewing machine is because I think my wife was tired of me asking her to do small projects for me. So she said, here, I'll show you how to use it. Do it yourself. And since then, I have made a lot of things with the sewing machine. Very basic projects, nothing too elaborate, but they have saved me a lot of time, a lot of money, and given me a lot of satisfaction. So let me show you some of the things I've made. So before I start, let me just say, there's a, the reason I'm bringing this video to you now is two things. I was packing my gear for a hike tomorrow, and I was grabbing some of the stuff I always take with me, and I recalled a, a comment that one of, the video, one of my viewers uh, asked about, and that is, what was the thing that you always see me wearing on my belt? What is this small blue-gray item that's always on my right hip? And I thought, you know, this is a good opportunity to talk not only, not only about this item, but to talk also about uh, how it came into existence. So simply, this little item is just a forage pouch or a drop pouch. Very simply made. It's nothing special. It's got a little dust in it from being in the woods. And uh, it's something that I can carry with me on my belt and fold it up position, doesn't take up very, any space really. And when I see something that I usually birch bark or maybe some edibles, like uh, recently I was uh, finding some Labrador tea, and that's what I use to collect the Labrador tea in, uh, I've got a sizable pouch. So it's, uh, it can be quite handy to have with me. Now I do carry other pouches or bags with me in my backpack, but I don't have to take my backpack off to access this one. It's right on my hip all the time. Now, what's interesting about this one is not just that I made it myself, the design of which is very simple, and we'll talk about the design in a second, but it's what it's made from. So this is made from an old barbecue cover. So <laughs> barbecue covers don't seem to last very long in the sun, and uh, over time they just start to deteriorate. So I've, I have this barbecue cover was starting to get ripped, and uh, I found there's still a lot of good material in that. It's got a, a bit of a rubberized backing on it and a cloth front on it. And uh, I thought, you know, I think I can use that for a few of my projects. It's, not, it's free and uh, it seems to be fairly durable. So why don't I try making a few projects out of it? Well, I have. I've made a few things I'll show you. It's uh, not the best material for longevity. I'm finding now that it does fray over time. But what it did give me is an opportunity to learn a few skills on designing small projects and... Uh, uh, making things that do work, if, if not for a very long time. But if I can ever get my hands on some better material, at least I'll have experimented on this inexpensive material and I'll be able to make better things. Speaking of materials, where do I get my materials to make things out of? Well, here in Halifax, Value Village. In the uh, thrift store, they have a section where people have donated... Uh, a lot of used or partially used uh, sewing materials, so they have a material section. And I can usually go through there and find something that'll meet the needs of a project that I have in my mind. For instance, this material right here. This is a heavyweight, not waterproof, but water resistant uh, nylon web. It's not uh, ripstop nylon and it's not a heavy cordure, but it is like a lightweight cordure. It's a material designed for. Uh, outdoor furniture like lawn furniture and and the like and uh, it's this nice light green color but uh, it's very tough and and makes very good projects and I've got a few things made from that that I'll show you in a second what else can you use how about an old pant leg from a pair of pants it becomes a big uh, forage bag or storage bag it's not a dry sack it's not waterproof but it uh, will hold a lot of materials and help organize how about an old wool sweater this is a merino wool sweater that I've cut apart and during my winter videos, or the win when I'm out in the winter, quite often you'll see me wearing a neck gaiter, homemade neck gaiter made from a merino wool sweater. And that went together quite easily. I've also used things like old pair of wool socks where the heels have worn out and then sewn them into uh, wrist warmers and that works quite well as well. Well, let me just show you a couple of the items that I've made from these materials and uh, give you some ideas, hopefully that you have something for projects you can start yourself. 
So where did the inspiration for this belt pouch come from? Well, I've watched a number of videos by bushcrafters and some of them are using some very nice traditional looking leather and waxed canvas pouches on their belts for forage bags. And I thought that would be a really nice thing to have and they look very functional as well as very traditional. And uh, the only thing was I didn't have the ability to work with leather or I didn't have access to a canvas that I could use. But uh, I thought, you know, maybe there's something that's already made. Well, I did discover that there are some pouches made uh, somewhat military in nature. You can find them from Condor and Maxpedition and very heavy duty uh, made pouches and but still quite expensive. So I thought I just from looking at them I think the design would be pretty easy to copy and that's all I did really is just looked at the designs from the pictures that I'd seen on the internet and the ads and the videos and came up with a design for this one. Funny thing was shortly after making this one I found one on eBay it is like this one here. Now this is looks like a Condor or Maxpedition. Uh, it is a Chinese brand and uh, I don't know if it's the same quality. I expect a lot of the Condor and Maxpedition ones are made in China anyway, but functionally it's identical. Velcro, dump pouch, drops down, opens up. That's quite big and nice too. Nice color, coyote brown or mud brown and uh, fits on. It's got molly straps on the back of it but this video is not about this pouch and I couldn't even begin to tell you where to find one like it. It's about making your own stuff. Let me put that away. So what else can you make? Well if you watch my videos all of the cookware that you'll see whether it be my uh, zebra billy pot, my GSI kettle, any of the fry pans, any of the pots, the things that are going to get sooty and dirty I've made a pouch for it. So I, I love my, my uh, GSI stainless steel catalyst and it's black and it's going to be if you get them in the fire and that's just the way it is and that's fine with me. Morris Kahansky will tell you that they'll actually work more efficient as they get that black coating on them. Whether they do or they don't, I'm not so sure, but it can be messy if you put it back in your backpack covered in soot. Make a little pouch. That's all you have to do. Make a little pouch. And this I made specifically for that kettle and it works quite well. It's getting dirty but I can throw it in the wash if I want to. If uh, it doesn't last I'll make another one. Little fry pan. I've used this in one or two of my videos. Fry pan with folding handle, stainless steel. Nice little fry pan. Pouch made for that. Recent item that you've seen appear in a, a couple of my videos is this uh, dollar store. Well, right now it, it's a grill that I can use, but it came off of a basket that was intended for uh, grilling vegetables on, over a barbecue. Well, that also can become a little dirty, so I decided to make a little pouch for that as well. Just have a little flat pouch. Slides right inside. Keeps my backpack clean. And everything else in my backpack clean. And that also is made from that barbecue cover material. That's good for this type of project. Honestly, your projects are limited to your imagination. If you are talented and skilled with the use of the sewing machine, you can make anything from a tent to clothing to backpacks to just about anything. I have a friend whose wife is a seamstress and she make, takes wool blankets and turns them into anoraks and beautiful pieces of viruses and functional art at that. So you can make just about anything. You can certainly repair your, your equipment or for instance uh, the clothing I wear when I'm out bushcrafting most of it has come from the thrift store. It's been checked over to make sure it's in good quality. Sometimes the legs are too long, sometimes the waist is too big. A few modifications on the sewing machine that's fine for me. And I don't have to spend a lot of money on very expensive gear. Okay just a short video on how you can save money and learning how to make your own equipment or repairing or modifying your own equipment with a sewing machine. And if you found this video of all interest, maybe you'll consider subscribing to my channel. But in the meantime, get out and explore. Take the path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.